Hey guys, it's Brian with the Science Factory and today we're going to be doing five experiments that you can try at home using toilet paper. Toilet paper. Because I bet you have a lot right now. If you don't, your neighbor probably does, so go ask them and they'll probably let you borrow some. Let's get started. So for experiment number one, don't you mean experiment number two? You're going to need some sort of container that can hold water, some water, toilet paper, because of course we're using toilet paper for all of these today, and you're gonna need some paper clips. Before we try this experiment, we're going to need to dump some water into our container. Check. So if I take a paper clip and I throw it in water, we would expect that it sinks. And of course, it does sink. It's heavier than the water, so it sank right to the bottom. You could try that with a few more. They all sink. In science, we like to repeat experiments. Still sinking. What are some other things that might sink? Well, batteries. Definitely doesn't float. Pennies. Still doesn't float. Tiny wrench. Also sinks. What about a computer mouse? Uh, probably best not to do electronics. Make sure you ask your parents about anything you try to float test. What about some things that float? Well, of course, there's paper. We would expect that to float, and it does. Rubber duckies with a little surfboard. He floats. Boats. Boats float if they fit. Air. definitely floats. Feel free to try as many materials as you want as long as you have your parents' permission to find out if it floats. Some things are kind of surprising, like apples. Do you think apples sink or float? That's a good one to try at home. But what if I told you that we could make a paper clip float? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, we just saw all of these paper clips. I dropped them in and they sank. How is that possible? Well, let me tell you that it is possible to make a paper clip float. Let's go ahead and try it. So what you're going to want to do is get one square of toilet paper, and then if it's a two-ply piece of toilet paper, make sure that you split it into a single ply. Next, you're going to want to take your single ply toilet paper and put a small paper clip delicately on top and really slowly lower that into the water so that the toilet paper is floating. Now, you might not be surprised yet, but watch what happens when we use this pencil to carefully push down the toilet paper. You want to do this very slowly because if you go too fast, the paper clip will fall down with it. And you see that? Our paper clip is floating even though it's not touching the toilet paper at all. This might take you a few tries to get the toilet paper completely away, but once you do, you can see the paper clip is freely floating. Now, of course, if you touch the paper clip and you make it go below the water at all, it's going to fall right to the bottom. Seems like magic, doesn't it? Now, the reason that this works is because of surface tension. Now, you might be wondering, how does this work? What is surface tension and why is it able to hold a paper clip on the surface of water even though the paper clip wants to fall? Well, that's a topic we'll be covering in next week's video on surface tension. All right, guys, that was pretty fun, wasn't it? Now it's time for experiment number two. <laughs> he said number two. For this experiment, you're going to need some rubber bands, a glass, and something that you can use to drip water. I like pipettes, but you might not have one at home. So you might have a medical syringe or even a drinking straw will do. The last thing you're going to need is some water. Luckily, I've got some right here. So before we begin, let me give you a couple of quick tips on how to drip water effectively. If you're using a straw, you're going to want to put the straw into the water, put your thumb over the top, and then lift it out. Instead of lifting up your thumb, that lets all the water go at once. So what might work better is if you put your thumb over the top and use your other hand to gently squeeze one drop at a time out from the bottom of the straw. This way you can control the exact number of drops, which is important because we want to control the variables that affect this experiment. 
If you're using a syringe, this can be a little bit trickier, especially if you have a big one like I do here. These like to shoot out more than one drop of water at a time, but there are still methods that you can use. If you slowly rock the syringe back and forth, you can get one drop to come out at a time. So this can still be an effective way to control your drips and be able to count them. Now, if you have a pipette or an eyedropper, you don't need to worry about any of that because they're designed to drop one drip of water at a time. Isn't that nice? So easy. You might be able to find one of these if you ask your parents because a lot of medications require an eyedropper like this. Now, the last thing that you're going to need is your samples. Now, I only have a couple of types of toilet paper at home, so what I did is I grabbed toilet paper number one, toilet paper number two, and I ripped one of them in half so that it was single ply to test the difference between single and double ply. And then I also wanted to test some Kleenex, a napkin, and a paper towel. What we're going to be doing is testing to see how absorbent these toilet paper and other papers are because we want to know, frankly, what's the most absorbent toilet paper. So let's get started. All right, so for toilet paper number one, we're going to put it on the glass. We're going to take our rubber band and we're gonna cinch this around the top. Now, when you're doing this at home, you might find that some containers work better than others. For example, this container is smaller than the toilet paper at the mouth, but this container wouldn't work very well because the toilet paper wouldn't be able to be cinched around the top. Look around your home for the perfect container. You want to try to get your toilet paper tightly so that the top is nice and flat. Next, you're going to take your eyedropper or whatever you're using to drip your water and see how many drops you can drop on this toilet paper before the drips start to come through. Let's find out how many drops it takes for our first sample of toilet paper. It took 36 drops for toilet paper number one to bleed through. Let's try toilet paper number two. Forty-five drops for toilet paper number two. Let's try number three. Fourteen drops. And now for the Kleenex. Wow, over 130 drops and it still hasn't broken. Maybe this is why Kleenex is so good for those runny noses. Four, five, six. Oh, 36. 36 drops. That's the same as our first toilet paper. I was expecting the napkin to last up to a lot more punishment than the toilet paper. Surprising. Last but not least, the paper towel. How do you think it's going to stack up? Okay, so over 130 drops again. Again, it didn't rip. So apparently paper towels and Kleenex are the two best paper options when you're cleaning up spills. But you might wanna consider that Kleenex kind of glom together into a mush while paper towels stay relatively tough and you can even wring the water back out. So which of these surprised you the most? I bet that no one was surprised that the single ply toilet paper fared the least well. That's probably why double ply toilet paper is so popular. But I was really surprised that Kleenex lasted so long. Kleenex feels very flimsy. But one thing we don't think about in our everyday lives is that toilet paper, once we flush it, has to dissolve in the water so that it's easier for the sewer systems because we don't want them to clog up. If we had toilet paper that would last as long as that Kleenex did, it would probably be a big problem. So that's one of the reasons that you should never flush anything that you haven't eaten already or that's supposed to go in the toilet, like our toilet paper. Now, I wanna hear from you down in the comments section. Write down in the comments what toilet paper you tested and how many drips it was able to take before you saw a drip fall through. Make sure that you're watching from the side carefully because it's easy to miss 
once the drips finally start coming through the toilet paper. Experiment number three. So in this experiment, you're gonna need a round object and a boxy object. And just for fun, I've got a, a second round object here. You're also going to need something to place your round object on. I recommend a, a roll of tape is a really great option and a couple of cardboard tubes from inside a toilet paper roll. Let's get started. The Bernoulli effect describes the way that air moves around a spherical object. So for example, with this globe here that's sitting on the table, if I was to blow air at it from this side, the air is going to go around the globe and then come back and continue in a straight path. It's an unexpected result and it's pretty cool to observe. If you want to try this part at home, make sure that you get a parent to help you with this step because it involves lighting the candle. So we're going to light this candle on fire. And we're going to place the globe close to it so that the candle is the same distance as my mouth is from the other side. And when I blow on this side, I should be able to blow out the candle. Now, I do want to say that this is a tough trick to pull off because you have to have the distances just right, but it's really cool if you can make it work. One more thing, if you're trying this at home, make sure you have somebody hold this in place so that it doesn't blow towards the candle. All right, let's give it a try. So what's going on here? How come the candle blew out? Well, with the globe in the way, the air has to go around it. And once the air currents from both sides finish going around the globe, they collide and continue in a straight path so we can blow out the candle. What else can we do with this trick? For this part of the experiment, you're going to need somebody to help you and two cardboard tubes. Luckily, I have my lab assistant, Miss Jennifer, here to help me out. All right, so Miss Jennifer is going to go like this and put her ear up to the tube and just like the candle, we want the tip of her cardboard tube to be the same distance from the globe as my tube is on the other side. And what we're going to do this time, instead of trying to blow out a candle, is pass a secret message on to each other. So I'm going to say something secret into the tube and whisper as quietly as I can, and she's going to try to see if she can hear what I'm saying over there. Are you ready? Ready. Carrots are purple? Yeah! You can also try other objects to see if it works with different shapes. Let's try this box, shall we? Could you hear me? No. Nothing? No. Hmm, you strange. didn't say anything. <laughs> Let's try another one. This one's interesting. It's round like the globe, but on the top and bottom it's flat. Do you think that's going to affect how it works? Now, what's really fun about the Bernoulli effect is it doesn't matter how big the spherical object is. For example, you can get a big, big 10-foot wide beach ball and have one person sit on one side of the beach ball and another person sit on another and you can still pass secret messages right around the ball. The same is true for blowing out a candle. Pretty neat, huh? Wasn't the Bernoulli effect awesome? Well, now it's time for our fourth experiment. For this experiment, we're going to be making a submarine that always floats right side up out of our cardboard toilet paper tube. For this experiment, you're going to need a toilet paper tube, some vegetable oil, some tape, a few pennies, a marker, some cardboard, I chose a pizza box because I love pizza, a plastic bag, a container with some water, and finally, some scissors. Let's get started. Our first step is to take our pennies and place them along the sticky side of our tape so that we can attach them to the cardboard tube on the bottom. Four pennies should do the trick. Now let's flip it up and attach it to the tube. These pennies will act as a weight to keep the tube pointing down. Next, we're going to take our plastic bag, 
open it up and put just a little bit of vegetable oil in. Vegetable oil is lighter than water, so this will help our submarine to float so that it doesn't go completely underneath the surface. You don't need to fill the bag all the way, and you want to try to keep as much air out as possible. Now we're going to fold up the bag and put it inside of our submarine. Just keep pushing and it'll go right in. Now we've got our pennies on the bottom and our float inside. The next step is to decorate this to make it look like a submarine, because let's be honest, this does not look like a submarine. I want to give this a tail fin, a little top, and a nose. So first, I'm going to mark how wide this paper tube is. Two times, so that I can draw a little tail fin, and a nice nose for the submarine. I'm also going to draw a little fin for the top. Then we're going to cut it out. I decided to color mine in just for fun. Next, I made a couple of slits in order to attach it to the tube. Finally, I taped on the top fin. All right, it might not be the most beautiful submarine in the world, but I like it. Let's see if it float tests properly. Remember, the goal was, just like a real submarine, we want the bottom to stay on the bottom, and we want the top fin to stay at the top. I'm hoping that we can get our submarine to float near the top so that you can see the fin poking out, and so that you can see that it rights itself so that it doesn't just flip over. We don't want everybody upside down in the submarine. All right, are you ready? Let's try this out. Three, two, one. Whoa, it floats. I added a little bit more water because I wanted to make sure it was floating and not just resting on the bottom. And you can see that it is floating freely. It's not on the bottom and it's keeping its fin out of the water, just like we wanted. See if you can get this to work at home and let us know in the comments down below whether you were able to get your submarine to float. Experiment number four, complete. So I hope you've liked our four experiments so far. It's time for our fifth and final toilet paper science experiment. We're gonna be making a cotton ball launcher. You're going to need some cardboard, some cotton balls, a pencil or a pen, some tape, and some rubber bands. You'll also need a cardboard tube from a toilet paper roll. Let's get started. For step one, you can use either an extra cardboard tube or some cardboard. I only have so many of these cardboard tubes, so I'm gonna use the cardboard for the first step. If you were using a cardboard tube, you would cut down the length of it and then make this into a much smaller circle. Let me show you what I mean. If you're using cardboard, you wanna mark out the height of the cardboard tube and cut a big square of cardboard. Remember, you can also do this step with a toilet paper roll that's been cut just like this. We're just going to make it into a smaller tube. Next, we want to take some tape and tape the ends. This way, it stays in a tube shape. Your final tube should be able to fit inside easily. For the next step, you can use either a sharp pencil or a hole punch. I don't have a hole punch at home, so I'm gonna use a sharp pencil. If you use a sharp pencil, please have an adult help you with this step. Next, we're going to cut two small slits on each side. You want these slits to be opposite each other. Next, we're gonna pick a couple of rubber bands. My favorite color is blue, so I'm gonna pick blue rubber bands. And we're going to put them on the tabs, just like so. 
Now, if we put too much pressure on this, this is just gonna fall right apart. So we're gonna use some tape to reinforce it once again. Next, we're gonna take our pen and cardboard tube, put it into the opposite end, and stretch the rubber bands so that they go onto the side of the pen. Now we have our cotton ball launcher. All right, let's test this thing out. Whoa! How far can you get yours to fly? Be careful when you're doing the tape because I had trouble at first with the tape sticking to the cotton ball. Another thing to be careful of is to make sure the inside tube is big enough to push the cotton ball all the way out. All right, that's five science experiments that you can try at home using toilet paper and household supplies. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. All right, why did the toilet paper roll down the hill? To get to the bottom, how do you get a tissue to dance? Put a little buggy in it. <laughs>